Welcome, you guys. Thanks. We are here to talk about a very important work of American theater, maybe the fastest play to get to an American stage from conception to uh, production. Uh, Building the Wall is currently playing at New World Stages. Um, you guys are starring. Robert, you wrote this play. And I have never been shaken so much after seeing a work of theater. I'm known sort of for my joyful enthusiasm, and this is a different kind of play. Um, I am incredibly enthusiastic about it. It also made me very uncomfortable. And I came out of it saying, thank goodness art like this exists. Robert. Wow, fantastic. Can you talk about writing this play? The new, you said in an interview with the New York Times, you wrote it in a white hot fury. Sure. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, no, I wrote this uh, in October of last year. It's at the end of what has to have been one of the more dispiriting presidential campaigns in recent memory. And I was just so um, upset and concerned because I felt that uh, a line had been crossed and damage had been done, and regardless of who was going to win. And so I sat down and I wrote this play, and I wrote it in a week, which is uh, unusual for me, and I think unusual for most people. And, uh, and then we rolled it out very, very quickly. It was a, a response to the kind of incendiary language we were hearing about border security, immigration, um, and the wall. And, um, and I thought, well, let's, uh, let's play this out. Let's see how, where that might go. And uh, where it has gone is all across the country in multiple productions. It's been extended for the third time in Los Angeles and in international productions, Canada, Mexico, and Europe, and now here in New York. Not just multiple, but simultaneous. Yes, Simul I think that's what's important. Yeah. They're all happening at the same time, which is really great. Well, most of them are happening at the yeah, same no, it's time. A, it's yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a very unusual rollout uh, for an American play. Just, you, you don't usually do it that way. No, and artistic directors are changing their seasons around to make sure this sure. gets presented yeah. now. Um, Badge, can I call you Badge? Um, microphone, yes. <laughs> I understand you, you, James Badgedale is the stage persona and Badge is what your friends and family There's many you. different personas. <laughs> Got it. Well, I saw one of them last night and he is scary. And Tamara, can you guys talk about your characters for people who haven't had a chance to see the play? Just give a couple of sentences of background of who we're seeing on that stage. Sure, I'll start. Um, my character is Gloria and uh, she's a, a history professor and she's very... Um, intrigued and passionate and impassioned about history and not just uh, in studying it but also in how history happens and so she's come to this um, high security prison to interview Badge's character who has been convicted of a crime uh, he's on death row we think um, and she wants to explore through him how a particular event came into occurrence and what was his role in that and, uh, and also she wants to uh, explore history as in, does it just happen or are we as individuals responsible for history? Do we make history? Do our actions make history? And so that's why I'm there. And Vaj, your character? Right, that, that was excellently said. So I mean, the only thing I'd, I'd add on to it, just from Rick's standpoint, is, is that this is his one chance. He didn't talk at trial and it's his one chance to tell the story. So. As Gloria and Rick are in this room together, two strangers who have never met, it is this, this opportunity to have this story told, and this is the only time it's going to be told, and after that, they go their separate ways. And um, um, in, in, a, in a strange way, I think, I think Rick is, is looking for some sort of redemption, but the, the truth is the play is about responsibility. I want to make sure we don't give away any specifics. Um, and it's, so hard. it's hard to talk about this play <laughs> without giving those specifics away. I do want to talk about the fact that it takes place in 2019, yeah. which is in projected the, on the, onto exactly. uh, the, the set. near future. It takes place in a prison. Um, this is a sort of speculative history play. Is that accurate? Well, it's a thriller. Um, uh, you know, it's a, who do, it's a whodunit and why done it. Um, we know it's a very intense, it, it's a very we? provocative. Well, do we is the question. I that suppose that question. yes. Uh, it's very much as as Badge said about responsibility, mm -hmm. and uh, and as Tamar said about uh, what is history, who makes history, mm -hmm. who is responsible. So. Can you talk about the landslide metaphor that comes up in the dialogue? Oh, uh, at first I think it's brilliant, but I'll let you talk about it because you wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, just the notion that. Uh, 
you know, what, what makes change happen? We're in the midst of an extraordinary moment of change right now, and, it, and for many of us, this is a, a time of high anxiety as a result, and, and there is a tendency to feel like, well, do I matter? Do, my, do I, as an individual, matter? Can I make change? Can I, can I do anything? And the play argues uh, very strenuously that, in fact, you, you do have agency, you do have power, and it's extremely important that you be conscious and that you use your power, and when you do, Enormous things can happen. Enormous things happen from the smallest beginnings. So the landslide metaphor is that every, every landslide begins with a single rock in motion, suddenly in motion. And it very much speaks to where we are today and our, our power as individuals in a tumultuous and, and seemingly very, very challenging moment. Badge, do you see Rick as uh, a reaction to that landslide or a stone that helped to start it? Okay, that's a really good question. I mean, it's, it's what I see probably doesn't matter. In, in Rick's mind, I, I, I wonder if he feels like he is that stone at certain times, you know, and then there's this other reality that, that I think he continues to try to hammer home is that I was not the stone. I was not the one who started it, you know. Our ego will tell us different things, but the argument is he was not. Um, what about you? Uh, uh, do you think that Gloria, um, I mean, she doesn't, it doesn't seem to me, take any personal responsibility for um, the uh, events that we learn about over the course of the play. Uh, but she has chosen empathy in the form of listening when nobody else really has. What's her place in this landslide of events? Well, it's interesting because I think, yes, I think at times she is empathetic. Um, but also I think, you know, she is after the truth, you know. And I think she has come there to, to, talk, to, to talk to Rick. And I just want to back up a little bit and just say that, you know, these two characters had been exchanging letters, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, a lot of um, uh, people who are incarcerated and, and might have some kind of notoriety or celebrity around them, you know, they get letters from different people. Can I interview you? Can I talk to you? Can I, you know, and he chose Gloria, you know, out of all the people who were perhaps interested in talking to him or interviewing him or whatever. Um, and, and because she's not a journalist and, she, and because she's not a, a news reporter or whatever, you know, um, I, so there is a certain kind of, you know, um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, but, but I think he felt she was safe to talk to, mm -hmm. you know? And so through the play, my character is many things. Um, at times empathetic, at times judgmental, mm -hmm. at times very challenging. You know, sometimes she's um, a listener, sometimes she's a confess confessor, sometimes she's a prosecutor, sometimes she's, you know, so, so she's, she's many things throughout the course of this. And she has different strategies that she uses in talking to Rick to, 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 to get him to come out, to get him to reveal, to keep him talking, to keep him sharing, to get to the ultimate, you know, end of our story. So it's, 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 it's great to play, and it's great to play with Badge um, because he's such an extraordinary actor. He's such an available actor. He's somebody that who, you know, I completely trust when I'm on stage, which is so critical and so important. It's just the two of us, you know, we are on this together for 90 minutes and, and there's no, there's, you know, I, I, I wrote in his opening night card, I had to, I had, I got to share this. I put in his card, I said, I feel safe. I, and I think that's the most important thing that an actor can feel mm -hmm. when they're on stage with somebody else. I, I just have to say, it's, it's, it's such a, a, a pleasure and a humbling honor to go out there every night. And when those lights come up and I look over and I see tomorrow's eyes and, and I know we get to share this next 75, 90 minutes together. And it's, um, you know, theater is, uh, it's, um, it's a privilege and, and, uh, 
uh, she's a powerful, powerful actress. She breaks me sometimes, you know. I'm watching her and I'm like, wow, she's so good. She's, oh, wait a minute, hold on. <laughs> Get the two of them the are, are really extraordinary together. It was so compelling. Um, yeah, I just want to say, uh, Bad said it's 75 or 90 minutes because it depends on the night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it depends on the night how long this play is. Well, I, I went back to see it a second time within four days because the performances are so compelling and because the writing is so... Crucial is the word that comes to mind. Um, I heard you reference, Badge, uh, or maybe it was you, Tamara, your first preview and how you went out feeling <laughs> unsure about, oh because the rehearsal God. process was so, was so... Um, it was terrifying. Let's, let's uh, talk I don't about know. Are this. There, maybe there are actors in the house. I don't know. But we had two weeks of rehearsal for this play. And it's, it's a conversation. So we're always talking, you know. And when, um, you know, when I was offered the play and, 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 and they said, and, you know, we want to get it out as quickly as possible, so we're going to do this two-week rehearsal process and we'll take it and we'll get it up. And I'm like, yeah! And then the reality happened and I was like, oh, shit! <laughs> I don't know if that can go out live on AOL, but... It absolutely that, can. It was like, oh, my God! So, so, uh, so yeah, so our first preview... Uh, I will honestly say, it, our first preview, it was the least prepared I've ever been in my career to hands, go in front of an audience. Hands down. There, there's something that is it's kind of called the actor's nightmare, where, where every actor has this, where you wake up in the middle of the night and you don't, you're on stage and you don't know what play you're in. You don't know what play you're in, Everyone's or you know you, what play you're in, your but next you don't line know the words, is. or you're there and you don't have your costume, mm -hmm. whatever. We were living the nightmares. This was a manifestation nightmare. of the actual nightmare. Yeah, really As you're was. sitting there really and, and you're backstage and there's this light. And the light is your cue light to go out. And then that cue light will go out and you need to walk onto stage. And I've never had the experience of walking on stage going, I do not know the play. <laughs> I don't know the story. What did yeah, you yeah, do? Yeah. Yeah. We, we supported each other. I mean, and that we was did. the beautiful thing about that experience. We did. That, and we had to call for, for line, or at least I did. I don't know if you did. We had to call for line a couple well, you, times. You saved me. We you yeah, I, yeah, I saved you a couple mm -hmm. times. We, you know, we derailed. We got back on track, yeah. you know. Yeah. But it was crazy. I mean, we came off stage, and we were just like, oh, my God. It was very real. It was very <laughs> and, and real. And, Robert, were you sitting in the I assume you were sitting in the oh, audience course, for that. Absolutely. Were you terrified? Oh, oh you know, I... I <laughs> It had been it had been an intense uh, period, uh, as everyone was saying, but um, and and this night had a certain additional level of terror and anxiety that uh, that a first performance doesn't always have. But boy, did it uh, did it bump things up, and 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 really, it's been uh, it's been great from there. Yeah, it's How not it's not a bad place. This for this play, for this encounter between these two people, to have the actors feeling a little bit back on their heels, a little bit unsure, sure. quite I, frankly. Yeah. I think we because grew from that sure. night. And, and, and I'll just say this, as an actor, I'm, I'm bonded to Tamara for the rest of my life <laughs> because yes. of that experience. We've been and, through and, the trenches together. And we, we've, we've built trust and uh, a powerful working relationship. And I'm, I'm, it's, it's yeah. actually it's really exciting. It's awesome. Yeah. I mean, you can, hear, awesome. you can hear a pin drop. I mean, that 90 yeah. minutes, the audience doesn't move. They're, they're sitting like this yeah. or, or gripping the, the armrest. It is, I have never been in the theater. And I've been doing this for a long time. I have mm -hmm. never seen an audience so riveted yeah. as they are by their performance. Yeah. This is really extraordinary. It's great. I, I remember telling Badge after one performance, you know, when the, light, when the lights came down, I heard, you know, a few people toward the front of the house when the lights, when we went to blackout, I just heard, ah. Mm hmm you know, there was just this, because uh, it was like nobody was breathing. Nobody was breathing to the end of the play. And, and there's no like, rush uh, to no rush to leave the theater either. People take people take their time and they want to talk. They want to they want to yes, talk yes, about what yes. they've just experienced. They want to talk about what they're feeling. Yes, it, it's it is a provocation and yeah, it's it's, it's accomplishing its job in, I a, in a big way. Left the the my theater seat and sort of in a daze walked over to the ladies' room and just sat and cried. Mm. I, I I felt I hadn't I hadn't been so poignantly aware of what our potential future is since the day after the election. And it reminded me that we need art and our artists to keep us awakened to what our reality is. And this is what I meant when I said it was a good thing to feel so uncomfortable because complacency is a dangerous beast. And I think anyone who is interested in not remaining complacent or not becoming complacent 
this play is the place to start. Yeah, and just to add on to that, I mean, when I, when I was approached about partici participating in the play, you know, I read it, uh, it, the producer sent it to me, and I, I read it in like an, uh, under an hour. It was just like such a page turner. I mean, it's, it's a bit of a thriller, you know, as, as Robert said, it's a thriller, you're on the edge of your seat. And I was like, yes, I have to do this, I have to do this. I mean, because, you know, I participate uh, uh, actively in, um, in, in, you know, elections and, advocacy and whatever I can do, you know. And um, as an artist, um, as an actor, this forum and to be able to use, you know, my craft and my profession to provoke and to stimulate and to activate the people who, who come to see what we do, I think is just another way to uh, participate as a citizen in this country, you know, so I'm very, very pleased and honored and inspired to be a part of building the wall. Mm -hmm. I felt that what I, what I wonder is, is this play is clearly a call to action. What I'm at a loss for is what's the action? And maybe your role as artist is not to dictate that. That's for the viewers to, de to declare. Yeah. I was thinking about Greek tragedy, of all things, and how the real tragedy of something like Oedipus is that he knows his future and is powerless to stop it. And that was kind of how I came out of this play, feeling like, what do we do? Yeah. Well, well, I I'm going to pose the question should, think, to you, like, what think, do we do? I think to, to, to stay engaged. I think you have to stay engaged and you have to participate, you know, and not accept things um, as the new normal. You know what I mean? We were talking about normal backstage. And, but also, I saw something a, a, a little while ago. I think it might have been a post on Facebook or something. And, and it struck me because um, a friend of mine, you know, um, I was uh, in the process of doing something, and it was suggested to me that if I just tweak something a little bit this way or that way, you know, then I could have this better outcome than I wanted. And, you know, and it didn't sit right with me because it kind of felt like cheating in a way, whatever. And so I was like, mm. And then I saw this post on Facebook. And, oh, and the, oh, and the person said to me, everybody's doing it. Everybody does it. Everybody does it, you know? And so I saw this post on Facebook that said, just because everybody does it doesn't make it right. Just because nobody is doing it doesn't make it wrong. And that just resonated and struck. And I think that's what this play is about mm -hmm. also. You know what I mean? I think that's what this is about. Well, I, think, I think good theater doesn't give you answers. It just asks really good questions. Right. You know, it asks really provocative questions. And certainly this play is all about staying awake, being conscious. Conscious. Being conscious, yes, not, yes. not turning away, not living in avoidance or denial, but embracing what is happening. We're, we're kind of, it's hard not to feel shock and awe right now with the kind of constant barrage of headlines and everything, and it, it's easy to turn away from that. It's a very human thing to like, whoa, too much, too and much. And also to know that you can be that stone as you said earlier, you can be the pebble dropped in the pond that starts the ripple. You can be the snowflake that starts the avalanche. You can be the, the, the stone that yes, starts the landslide. If, if you think about the landslide theory, where do you want to be in that landslide? Right. You know, do you want to be overwhelmed by it? Do you want to start it? Are you someone who knows how to stay above it? Because that's a skill also, you know? Um, I, I, and we ask the questions. It's not our job to give the answers. I know. We just tell stories. That's what we do. Well, we throw bombs in a room and just let it you know, go. I am eager to see, to continue to see the reactions from the people whose job it is to, to react to those questions. Um, I'm curious how, as actors, you're able to simultaneously maintain that tension, that fear maybe that you had that first night, and also to continue to live your lives without getting totally sucked into the intensity mm -hmm. of a role like this. Yeah, um, I, we're storytellers. It's our job to leave it at the theater. But you know, we, we come, we, we do six days a week, eight shows a week. And um, you know, this, it, this, the nature of the beast is that it always engulfs you. Um, um, it, and it's, a, it's an intense play. Um, I find m myself, I'm a little happier right now if I don't mm -hmm. watch the news or pay attention to what's ha happening in the outside world. You know, my world is, is uh, with Tamar, <laughs> 75 to 90 minutes a night. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, 
and, and, and answer the earlier part of that. Um, you know, that first night, we as actors were on edge. But now that we have become more confident in the play and in our ability to, you know, remember our lines, um, we as actors are comfortable in what we're doing together. Although our characters are still on edge mm -hmm. and not sure. And, you know, on this journey together and doing this dance together. So it's, you know, it's, it's separating, it's easily to separate the, ang the different anxieties at this point. <laughs> that's, the, that's the beauty of, of great actors in performance, working with difficult, challenging material, is the honesty and the depth of feeling and the vulnerability that they bring to it, and, and then the ability to set that aside and walk away. It's uh, that transformation. These are both, these are both transformational actors. Mm -hmm. You know, they walk out there and they are these other people. And that's such a thrill as an audience member to watch that, and then to watch them leave it and behind and walk away is its own kind of uh, wonderful mystery every night. We're going to go to questions from the audience in a minute, but that leads me to one more question I want to ask, which is um, sort of two interlocking questions. Do you find that the majority of your audience comes in kind of knowing what they're going to get from the title of the play and the Statue of Liberty in the, in the art? Um, and, and or do you find that someone's like, I love you on Law & Order SVU, or like, I loved you in Iron Man, so I'm going to just go see whatever you do. And how do those two kinds of audience members react differently to the work? Hmm. I think this is the, I, the reaction that I've gotten from most people, whether they're fans who, you know, came because they know me from other work or whether they were compelled by the title of the play, is mostly they have said to me, wow, I never saw that coming, you know? And that's what I think is so great, mm -hmm. because I think everybody comes in with certain expectations, but that this play is surprising, unexpected, and, and leaves you at the end just kind of in shock and awe. Yeah. And, and I think that's thrilling. The playwright version of this question is, how's the play um, landing in markets that are not necessary? Is it playing anywhere that's not like a blue state? Oh, no, it's, you know, it's, state? Playing, it's playing all over. It's in Texas, it's in California, it's in Oregon, it's in Phoenix, it's in New Mexico. So uh, how, are, how do audiences vary well, in I their say, reaction? Can I just say, this isn't a political play. I don't think this is a political play. No? You know, I think it's much bigger than that. Mm -hmm. I think what, what Robert has written is something that is universal. I think it's something that is timeless, even though it's dealing with this specific time. Mm -hmm. But I think that's the interesting thing about specificity. Specificity somehow opens it up to a universality. So this play, even though we're doing it now, this play could be done 20 years from now. Mm -hmm. This play could be done 50 years from now. This play could be done 100 years from now. This play could be a classic. You mentioned earlier the Greeks. I mean, that's kind of this, it's, it's epic mm -hmm. in that way, even though it's in this microcosm yeah, of there's a, a play. You there's know. a line in the play that's a quote from Jeff Sessions from like two, three months ago. It's so current. It's very current. It's yeah. very current. But I, I, I agree. But it's it's important to remember that that's, that's our setting. That's yes. our setting, yeah. and this is something that, that as, as people in this country can grab onto right now and relate to, but if you remove that setting and place a different setting in, this play works mm -hmm. in so many different eras and in so many different countries, and people are going to recognize the story that we're telling because the story itself is timeless. And very human. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it, it's being rolled out internationally, mm -hmm. so it's not, it's not seen as a single-issue play. Did you say it was uh, someone reached out from, like, Beirut or... Tehran. From, uh, Tehran. Wow. We're, we're, Tehran. We, you know, we, we have productions play. in Austria and Canada and Mexico and Costa Rica and Tehran and being translated into French and German. I mean, it, and, and that's because this anxiety and, and the underlying thematic concerns about what do I do, what is my responsibility... Um, are universal themes. They're, they're not unique to America and they're not unique to, our, to a particular political situation. Absolutely. Well, clearly we could go on talking about this for hours. We do need to get to a couple of members of the audience uh, before we say goodbye, so let's do that now. Hi, how are you guys? Hi. Um, 
I just want to say congratulations on the success of this play, and it's so great that there's so many productions of it going on. Um, as like you guys have been saying, like art's so important, especially right now. Um, and I was wondering, what was the most challenging part in approaching your roles, and what um, challenges did you run in writing this play? You want to start? I'll start. Um, I, the most challenging thing, I think, was the time we had in which to get it up and, and in front of an audience. That was the most challenging thing for me, you know, um, because the group of people that we're working with, our director, Ari Edelson, he's not here today, you know, I mean, just wonderful. Our stage management team, everybody was there to support us in whatever way we can. What do you need? We, you know, and so the challenging thing was just like the time that we had to get it together. <laughs> For me, it's, uh, I rolled this play out in a completely different way, a completely unique way, uh, multiple productions simultaneously, which meant that uh, as a writer, I had to give up an enormous amount of power. Normally, I'm, I'm there for, for a world premiere. I'm there for every moment of it. And I had to just turn that over and then to try to manage or oversee multiple productions across states and international boundaries is really tricky, but very exciting at the same time. Will you continue to write that way? And do you think you'll inspire other uh, writers to do that? Well, I certainly hope that, that, that what we've created here is a paradigm for other artists mm -hmm. to respond in moments of political urgency. A absolutely. Will I? Yes, I, I will continue to work this way and in the way I normally do. I also write for film, I write for television, and I continue to do that. So it's, it's an expansion of the way I work, not a, not a narrowing. Mm -hmm. Do we have another question? Hi, this question is for James. Uh, you've been in a lot of intense roles in your career, from Simon to playing Leckie and now this. And this is going off of what you said. How difficult is it for you to separate out from this role, contrasted, say, with the role of Leckie, who is a real person? Um, it, it's, like I said, it's our job to separate out. And sometimes you are very successful at that, and sometimes things can trickle in, you know, and, uh, uh, but you work against it because you want to stay healthy and sane as a human being. And what we do is a little bit insane. And so um, the trick is to try to get through this thing okay. And that does take work, yeah. We have time for one more. Hi, um, I think that art is about truth and it's supposed to inspire conversation. So I was wondering as performers and as the playwright, how that affects your process in writing and performing? Oh, I pay very close attention to the audience uh, throughout the process, um, I, both sitting there w watching the performance and watching the audience and seeing where they lean forward and where they sit back and w where they get quiet and, and where they get uh, anxious. And then, and then in conver multiple conversations afterwards, I, I pay a lot of attention to what people say and how they say it, how they talk about it or what they don't say. I think it's very... Uh, very useful to, to do that, and it does, uh, it does help shape the work, as I, particularly in the latter part of it, as I'm refining it. So from the writing standpoint, I pay a lot of attention to my audience. I think it's very important. I don't know about from a performer standpoint. Well, um, I feel like as actors, our, our duty is to the play. Our duty is to tell the story that the, uh, that the play is telling as honestly as we possibly can. And being... Uh, I, 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 I think I said this in your card opening night. I, I, I feel like we're vessels. We're vessels and the truth through the writing of, uh, from the playwright, the truth is passing through us, coming in and passing out. And, and our job is to be as open as possible to that entering and as honest as possible to delivering it to the audience. Well, you're doing an incredible job. <laughs> I think that the truth of the material, both as it's written and how it's presented every, every night, um, is, it, it really shook me. And I think I can tell it's shaking audiences at every performance. Like I said at the start of this interview, uh, it's not the most comfortable situation. It's not where you go when you wanna like, you know, have a laugh and, and do a tap dance. Well, you know? I think great art and should make you uncomfortable. I, that I, that's exactly where <laughs> I was going. Absolutely uncomfortable. This is, it's, it's certainly intense. It's certainly provocative. I would also call it essential. Uh -huh. And I encourage everyone around the world, now that we know it's playing around the world, to find a production, go and see it. If there's not one near you, call those theaters because they need to be putting this play on. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.